Loretta, you tell us a little bit about your experience. How old were you when you started this wonderful work? Well, I started when I was nine years old. I used to, I lived with my grandmother, and that's all we did for a Harvey quilt back in the days, the older people's quilt. And so my grandmother quilted, and I would thread the needles for her to quilt at night because she couldn't see too well. And then she said, well, time for you. Now you're old enough to make some quilts. It's time for you to start to making quilt. And she said, you're going to piece this quilt, and when you piece it, you're going to quilt it. And so it took me a year before I finished the quilt. I was uh, 11 years old then. Banks of Jadon, my Lord said, come on in, I, I need you there. I pieced the quilt, but it took me a long time to piece it. Every time I would put it down and thank my grandmama done forgot about it, she said, you get your quilt now and sew some on it. You're going to sew this quilt till you make it, and when you make it, you're going to peep, you're going to quilt it. And that's what I did. And she said, you're going to have children, and you're going to need quilts to keep them warm. And that's what we did. We made quilts to keep us warm because we didn't have but we didn't have no lights. We didn't have no gas. We didn't have no running water. We had to tote water. <coughs> we had the hot water to wash with, to cook with, to take a bath with. We, I had to tote water. I didn't even have a pump. So I thank God for aiding me to do it, make those quilts to keep me and my kids warm. <laughs> Because we didn't have no quilts, no, no heat, no oven in the living room and in the kitchen, and we had to cook with wood. So I thank God for it. My grandmama learned me that, and I did it. And I needed to do it because we didn't have no heat in the bedroom. And later on in the night, around about 2 or 3 o'clock in the night, it get cold. And so we needed to make those quilts, and I didn't have nothing to make quilts out. So what little I scrapped up. I said, I got to make quilts. Every little good piece I can find, I made quilts out of it. I patched my kids' clothes. I, was, I used to patch them. So when they got so bad, I couldn't patch them. The hem in the front, I would take the leg part and tear the best part and make quilts 
out of old material like jeans and huntsman dresses back in the days and corduroy. And I always made my quilt out of old material. So God done blessed us now. It's a lot of new material. Mm -hmm. All those quilts in that book and on that wall in the museum, they were made by my hand. Some of them, one or two new pieces was in there. I got one or two quilts with new fabric in it. And I pieced by my hand, I quilt by my hand. And those quilts in that museum and on that wall, they are quilted with cotton from the gin house. We picked cotton then and we gin. And that's what we had to put in our quilt. And I started quilting when I was 12 years old. My first quilt I made, it took me a, a whole year to make and quit it too. And I thank the Lord that he able me to get here to know I could piece quilt. That's one of my quilt right there. I could piece quilt. This is quilt. your quilt Yeah, here. that is it's my quilt. It's just beautiful. And, and most of the thing I piece quilt and with. your stitches are beautiful. Is, yeah, is corduroy and, 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 and jean. That's and I take corduroy and something somebody had worn. And I love it. Mm -hmm. They loved it. And yeah. I make my quit. I be singing and praying. And it made them remember yeah. what, where they went when they saw. They was, oh, I wore this when yeah. I went uh -huh. to, to church. Right. Or I wore this to school. Uh -huh. yes. and, <coughs> and it just do my soul good mm -hmm. for me to sit there and sing and pray and talk to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. I struggle, but the Lord brought me through that That's struggle. That's right. I keep tolling, tolling through the storm and rain. I've been patiently waiting, waiting for my blessed Lord. Lord, I'm coming home. My mama, she loved to sing, and when she taught me how to peace quit and things, she always be singing and praying. And I could hear her groan in the groan. And her groan was, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. She didn't have nothing, and then she had all those kids. And here was trouble when you could hear that groan. He just it do something to your heart. It just melt your soul, because Mama and them struggling so hard. I'm six to seven years old. My birthday coming up, and I can do some of anything I want to do. It may not last but a little while, but I can do some of anything I want to do. And mostly I really learned with my mom because she used to uh, make quilts and sell to help put my brothers through high, uh, college. I had a brother to go through college off of quilts my mom made and sold. And, and I just started from there. It's a, just a fast learner. She just see me do something, she'll go and do it. She's just a fast learner. She, Always is easy to catch on. If she see you do something, she'll do it too. And this here's just a pastime hobby I like. Sometimes when I get off of work, I'll come home and maybe sit down and make a quilt. Or either just sit down and think about how I wanted to design one but I normally end up with a different design that I have in mind. Like right now. I don't know what I got in mind to do with this. But it's gonna turn out to be a pretty nice quilt when I finish it. Yes, it was very smart, very active, good understanding about things. She loved to sew. 
She loved the boy. I basically, I love my quilts when I make them. They be beautiful to me. I don't know about how to anybody else, but to me. And then when I quit them, oh, I get another breath of them. She'll come there and say, Mama, is this the way it's supposed to go? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go, just like that. I didn't know too much about what the way it's supposed to go myself. I just tell her, yeah. She ain't, she ain't kind as I am. She ain't gonna take what I take, though. <laughs> it ain't gonna work that way with her. She'll take something, but she ain't gonna take as much as I took. She always told me, Mama, I ain't gonna take what you took. We was quitting with four frames, and we make so skews up in the light, and the, the wall of the house, and the loaf of the house, and we quilt. We had strings, and we let it down when we get ready to quilt. And at night, we let it up while it won't be in the kids' way mm -hmm. because we had children. I had children, and we had to have heat in the house. And sometimes I would stay up to 2 and 3 o'clock quilting. I mostly quilt by myself. And I never thought they would be hanging in the museum. <laughs> and I never thought they would be on stamp. So they look so pretty in the museum. Beautiful. And they look so nice on the stamp. Ooh, I just love it. Thank God for it. Because I had a hard life. I had to do my choices, cook for my kids, wash for them, iron their clothes, get them ready for school. And I had to tote water for everything. So God had really blessed us. And he aided us not to, to, to enjoy, to reap the reward that he had for us. Till about two or three o'clock in the night, I used to would, would would get tired, but I had to do it. I had to do it because I had a family, and I had to keep them warm because when nobody give me now, I quit, and I couldn't buy no blankets, and we didn't have no good material. We just pieced out what we can find out of old clothes, and I made what I could make. They kept me warm. I loved the those pretty ones, but I couldn't make them, and so I didn't worry about them. I did what I can do. The Tenwood Alliance uh, and Tenwood, a group of organizations that work together, uh, were founded by my dad and myself and Tenwood Books, which is the publishing part of Tenwood, was founded by my dad and, and the actress and activist Jane Fonda to bring works like the work these two wonderful women make, but also the work of other important artists throughout the South. Um, the Tenwood Alliance researches and documents and tries to preserve and, and after doing all of that presents uh, the, the work and the documentation uh, tries to present it in a way uh, to the public bring it to the public's attention for too long the kind of work not just the quilts but the paintings and the sculpture and other things created by African Americans in the South have been overlooked or ignored uh, or copied by other people and and so the Tenwood Alliance tries to bring all of that material together 
interview and research the artists and also preserve it because so much of that uh, culture is being just, you know, lost every day. So we do that and um, organize ex art exhibitions, which uh, we hope uh, to find museums that are interested and think it's as important as we do, and and books, publish books, and do documentary films, and anything we can to try to bring this work to the public's attention. Yeah, and it quit would come in my mind what I wanted to make. I could put it there on my bed, and I didn't even have to have a pattern. I just, it just came right in my mind, and I said, I believe I go do this. I just get me a seals and I just cut and make any kind of quit I want. He's uh, an Episcopal priest who's doing civil rights work, uh, went to G's Bend, went to Wilcox County where G's Bend is, and, and noticed some of the quilts and thought maybe we can start a cottage industry. And, and they eventually began make, designing, having quilts designed that the women in the community would make that would sell in places like Bloomingdale's and those different places. And it didn't really work. It, it, I, somebody joked, it'd be like asking Picasso to, you know, to come paint your house. He's a great painter, so we'll find a job for him painting houses. And it didn't really respect the work that the women did. It, it recognized their, their sewing skills, but it didn't um, fully appreciate their, their artistic abilities. Got some pieces, sold them together. Mm -hmm. That reason I can't piece no fancy quilts now because I just got a, got a piece and sold it together and made quilts. Couldn't even quilt them good, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, I just got any kind of piece. I, I wouldn't charge, I wouldn't pick it. I just got any kind of piece I can find. If it didn't match or whatever, I just sold it together. Jeans, not just tough jeans. You know, some jeans tough, not that kind. Jeans and cotton rod, all of that good quilting stuff. Mm hmm Yeah. Piecing all these fancy quilts. Mm-mm. I never could piece too much of fancy quilts. I just just do it my just do my way. You know. You study over thing, you think over. And it come in your mind one thing at another. One thing at another. You get it all together. You say, mm-hmm, I could do that. And you could do it. That's the way, I, that's the way it was with me. That's the way I learned. You was using sometimes little trench clothes, the men's pants. You, the first thing, you cut the block. Next thing, you put them blocks together. With the needle and the thread, you sew these pieces together. You want to make them in blocks, you make them in blocks. Or you could make the blocks and put the blocks together with strippings in between or whatever way you want to put them together. If you want to sew the quilt just round and you go round or round and finish the quilt. When Ben Nell came down there, I told me, I said, the Lord sent y'all down mm -hmm. here. And I thank the Lord for him sending them because they helped us to come this far. If it hadn't been for me and Bia, we wouldn't have been here today. They knew we were making art, and we didn't know anything about art. And I just thank the Lord that they came and opened up doors with the Lord to help mm -hmm. for us to go place. It wasn't nothing but the good Lord who did it for us, and I thank the Lord, and I thank you, man, for you. And he traveled with us so much. He all the time on the phone trying to make preparation for us to go places. And he asked me, you, do you want to go sit in such a place? I said, yeah. He said, I want to know, because when that time come, if I change my mind, I got to go, because he done made reservation and everything. And I just thank you, man, for so much you have, dear. Thank well, you. Thank you, not just for myself, but for everybody. I mean, I, I just wake up every day and just feel blessed that I had a small role in helping the world know about you yes. and Loretta and G's Ben. That yes. makes, uh, makes me very happy. Oh,
I would like to introduce to you the president of the Gamma Theta Omega chapter of the Kappa, of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and she is the president of this chapter, Ms. Gwen Myers. Welcome, Gwen. Thank you so much for bringing the G's Ben Alliance and artists here to us today. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about how that all started? Yes, Gamma Theta Omega has been a part of the Tampa Bay community since 1940. And our programs of service consist of education, the black family, economics, health, and the arts. And we wanted to showcase the arts to the Tampa Bay community in the way of the form of a stamp that was issued by these quilters from G's Bend, Alabama. And with our partnership, the United States Post Office, uh, Sweet Bay Supermarket, and the Children's Board, has given AKA the opportunity to have the quilters here and promote what they are doing in the way of education. We also had the opportunity to visit two schools, Shehai Elementary and Robles Elementary, so that our youth would be informed of how important the art is in education. Well, we really thank you for bringing this wonderful artwork to our attention here in the Tampa Bay area and we applaud your sorority for all the wonderful works that they've done throughout the years, such notable people as Toni Morrison and uh, Maya Angelou, Angelou, and also we have Althea Gibson was also a member of the AKA, so we're very pleased to have you here, and thank you so much for bringing the G's Bend quilters to our community. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank you so much. For the past 24 years, thousands of older adults in the Tampa Bay area have opened these doors to enriching the golden years of their lives. Classes here cater to the 50 and up crowd, but don't let that fool you. This is definitely not your grandmother's senior center. This is the Life Enrichment Center where savvy seniors partake in cutting edge classes like African drumming, modern dance, and computers. Now, if you had opened the, uh, a picture like it's early picture Tuesday morning computer. and computer class is well underway. Students here are learning to surf the, the net. Wait, when you're working on a document and you would have X'd out of the We whole started the computer classes about a year ago. Actually, our teacher, is teach she designed our website, Pro Bono, and she's now teaching the classes and they're wonderful. She is excellent with older adults. People who come to the classes primarily have e either very little or no background in technology like computers. So she knows how to just take them from point A to point B and by the time they leave the class, they're, they're operating their own computers and it's been, been 
successful beyond our, our wildest dreams, we have a waiting list for that class on a regular basis. The center offers 35 different classes a week in order to keep up with the varied interests of these active seniors. We have more than 30 classes. There are academic and health and wellness classes. We view this as a preventative program, a program that keeps people active, interested, having fun, enjoying life, having a high quality of life throughout their years. You can see as you look around the center that the people who come here are aging positively and very, very successfully and enjoying their lives as well. Well attended art programs offer these Renaissance retirees the opportunity for creative expression and socializing. For Irene Lewis, art class has given new meaning to her life. Uh, about 10, 15 years ago, I went through a spell of very deep depression. I wound up at the Northside Clinic for two weeks. They released me, but I wasn't cured. I just happened to notice in the news, newspaper that there were, uh, they were asking for people to come to the Life Enrichment Center to take various classes, and one of them being art. So I came this, to this class. Depression is gone completely, yeah. Because we need people. We need to associate. We need to interrelate. We need to understand each other. The physical, emotional, and mental well-being of these participants Correct. is paramount to the center. Classes in Tai Chi and modern dance help with physical agility, muscle tone, and balance. I've actually had an improvement in my uh, balance on the test, you know, the bone density test. Spanish and computer classes help active elders retain mental acuity. Drumming class is a perfect example of a fun class that offers subtle health benefits. Drumming like this helps strengthen eye-hand coordination, muscles in the hands and arms, and memory all in a gentle way. Even though the Life Enrichment Center works diligently to help shape and change the lives of its participants, it also helps to shape and change the attitudes towards our ever-increasing aging population. If you're retired, semi-retired, or just looking for a way to enrich your life in your golden years, you can open these doors to the Life Enrichment Center and open your life to new and exciting possibilities.